You can be up front. Good morning. Good day to say, let's rise and sing.
stay standing, please. Thank you, music team. Just a wonderful set of lyrics on this Resurrection Sunday. And now what I'm going to say to you, I want a response to follow. So I'm going to say, Christ is risen. And you can say, risen. he is risen indeed, and I'll say hallelujah, and you say hallelujah. Okay? Here we go. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Welcome, everybody, to worship on this Resurrection Easter Sunday. Forever God is with us. And that's what we get from the Resurrection Day, that we know the victory has been won over sin and death. And God is with us forever, now and forever. And we have that beautiful promise for each one of us. Welcome, everyone. And this is your first time here. We have a guest book. And if you'd like to sign that, that would be good. And uh, we have refreshments. You can take a coffee anytime during the service and a refreshment. And we're just so happy you're here as we celebrate together this uh, time of worship. Hear the call from God. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And a welcome to all of you who are worshiping with us online as well. What a blessing that we have that. Please follow on the call to worship. I'll be the one, and then we will all be the all. O oh, day of resurrection, we lift our hearts with joy. Christ has led us from death to life. Hallelujah. O oh, day of resurrection we will with hope. Christ has led us from earth to heaven. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Amen. Lost your way, you lost your cool, you straight up lost your mind. Try to start to stay ahead, but you keep falling behind. Life is gonna pull you down, make it hard to see. But a little change in your point of view could be just what you need. There's always a reason to always choose your life. There's something deeper that the world can destroy. Smile when you think you can smile. Up and dance, smile. There's a bigger plan. The storm only lasts for a while. So smile. Happiness is wonderful, but it doesn't stick around. Walking on sunshine, then here come the clouds. You can laugh or you can cry when it all falls apart. I believe the more you laugh, the more you heal the heart. There's always a reason to always choose to joy. There's something deeper than the world can destroy. Smile when you think you can. Smile, get up and dance. Smile, it's a bigger plan. You've got a reason to smile when you think you can. Smile, just clap your hands. Smile, it's a bigger plan. You've got a reason. There's always a reason to always choose your joy. There's something deeper that the world can't destroy. Smile when you think you can. Smile, get up and dance. Smile, there's a bigger plan. You've got a reason to smile when you think you can. Smile, just clap your hands. Smile, there's a bigger plan. You've got a reason to smile.
Wow. Have a seat. Thank you. That's great. And the Christian faith is about joy and uh, what Jesus has done for us. Shall we come to our God in prayer? God of resurrecting power, you lift our hearts with joy when we see the tomb is empty. God of resurrecting hope, you fill us with excitement when we hear that Christ is risen. God of resurrecting love, you embrace us with courage when we trust in the power of new life that you promise. In the risen Christ, we offer you all glory, honor, and praise with hearts overflowing in Jesus' name. God of resurrecting joy. We confess it's not easy to sustain Easter hope. We let discouragement, fear, and frustration to settle in, and we let anger and anxiety turn our hearts away from you. Resentment and disappointment cling to us, Lord, and we forget your great mercy and love. Forgive us. Restore within us the joy and hope you promise us in Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And we have a declaration of forgiveness for each one of us. And it's good news. Hear the good news. Who is in the position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we're forgiven, set free for new life by God's resurrecting grace. Amen. And uh, is it time for our Sunday school? Yeah. So the children and the teachers can leave for their Sunday school classes. Happy Easter. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is a place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, we're going to sing this two-part song we have not done in a while, and uh, just because I know it can be unfamiliar if you're new or visiting, uh, we're going to sing through the verse and chorus first, and then when we get to the two-part stack, the ladies' part will be in italics, and the men's part is in bold, just so you can kind of follow along, and the ladies will be leading you in the ladies' part, and Brian and I will lead the men's part. So let's stand together, and we'll sing through this first verse and chorus first, just to familiarize ourselves.
joy, eh? When you worship together, you sing together and you're, you're lifted up, eh? Just a beautiful part, such an important part of worship. Doing it together, there's action there. And we're a community. Today is the high point of the church year. Easter. We have Christmas, which is a big celebration, but Easter is the high point where we know that his love endures forever and that Christ is always with us and Christ is our Savior. And we, we don't have to be afraid. And it's a story. The story of Christ is a story that connects with our story. We love stories. I know when the kids were little, our youngest is now 27, when they were little kids and at bedtime, I would tell them a story and I'd make up some stories and I'd read books and so on. And they would say, tell me a story, Dad. Tell me a story. And I sometimes have to come up with some pretty lame stories, right? Just, <laughs> just to satisfy it. But other times I've got these creative juices that happen. I remember I'm second youngest of six kids. My oldest brother is almost 10 years older than me. And I remember he went to high school. And uh, I loved dinner time because he would tell the story of all the antics of his friends and, and how silly the teachers were. 
I always found that <laughs> Dave Edwards has got his thumb up there. <laughs> and it was so entertaining that uh, he was a storyteller. So was my dad. My dad would, uh, he was a house painter, painter and decorator. And uh, dad would pick up some really interesting things and he would talk about, uh, you know, what conversations he's had with the customers and, and sometimes they'd be hilarious. It was just, stories are so important to us and we remember stories as a kid and we like to tell stories. And today, we're just um, talking about the story of Christ and who came down in history to be our savior. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Adjusting our narrative. And I know we have, all of us have a story of our life. And I remember when I went into seminary, that's the university program where you become a minister, Master of Divinity program. And I had to tell my story over and over again. My faith story, how I came to want to become a minister. What led me to the call? And it's, it's so good to tell your story, right? But sometimes our narratives or stories are, they're kind of negative. And um, the disciples' narrative had turned negative as well when Jesus was killed, right? They thought their leader, who they had all this hope in, was gone. Even though Jesus said, I will rise. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Not I was, I am the resurrection and the life. They didn't get it, right? And then when he died, they thought it was gone. It was done. The good news was over. And then what happened on the third day? He rose from the dead. And um, they were changed from fearful followers to fearless evangelists. Amazing. And some people say that's the biggest proof for them of the resurrection. Just how these, you know, this motley crew, <laughs> whose resume did not look very good, became these fearless evangelists because they had the good news. How's your narrative? Do you see things on the negative side? Is there a way that you can look at things a little more positive? Because when we practice our narrative and we say it over and over again, it becomes like a groove in our brains and it's hard for us to get out of. Today we've got good news, we've got good beginnings. Even though things in our lives or in the world are painful. We see conflict, we see illness we see so many problems and even problems in ourselves I keep doing the same thing over and over again we may say and then we have the narrative of Christ who wants Christ's narrative of hope and joy to infuse our narrative there's a different way to look at things isn't there we've heard from our brothers and sisters our neighbors sometimes we have to say when somebody's being negative, you know what, there's another way to look at this. And that is spreading the good news, by the way. Jesus said, I mentioned in, in um, John 1 verse, or sorry, John 11, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he said that to Mary and Martha when they called for Jesus to come and heal their brother Lazarus, and then Jesus did not come right away, right? And then, he came there, if you were here, Master, he wouldn't, he, he wouldn't have died, he, you know? And Jesus, what did Jesus say? I am the resurrection and the life. And that, those words for us, those I am words, stick with us today, 2,000 years after the resurrection, right? Not I was, but I am. And we live with that resurrection Every day, I got to remember what Jesus said. I am the resurrection and the life. Amen? He is risen. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Kind of keeps us a little more attentive, eh? When you know that might be coming. So, <laughs> so I remember um, I, I was driving with um, another student when I was going to seminary. We were living in Coldwater at the time. I was a student minister there. Highway 89 and the 400 is where we met. He was uh, in Cremor, and uh, we'd have these long talks. And he said, you know what, I'm going to preach a sermon this Sunday. And I'm going to say, you know what, all of us are terminally ill. That's how he's going to start the sermon. Right? And I thought, well, that gets people's attention. Right? (laughs) And it's true, isn't it? Like, sometimes we hear of people with terminal illnesses, and then they go into um, remission, and then, and then they're okay, right? But they're still terminally ill in the sense that we all will die. That's part of our story, isn't it? And it's important that we become sort of cognizant. Stephen Covey once put it this way, keep the end in mind, right, as you live your life. In line with that, in in line with our narrative, right, that's that uh, we will all die. Also that our narrative, as Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. We have to keep that always before us. But in terms of the narrative that we are vulnerable and we will all be weak and all of us will die, I heard a scholar say, um, that it's important for us in terms of our narrative, right? Is that we cultivate in us an ethic of insecurity or vulnerability, okay? One that acknowledges and embraces our existential insecurity, okay? And we we are insecure, we're, 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 We just have to take the climate the way it is, right? We have to take illness. We have to take um, death, right? We have to acknowledge that, that we are not in control of all those things. We'd love to be. There's so much we're in control of, but there's so much we're not in control of. So it's important that we embrace that, that we are vulnerable, okay? But then at the same time, resisting the manufactured forms of insecurity imposed on us. And what are those things? We've heard about it in the news, right? There's a court case where school boards are, are suing um, social media, right? And those are imposed forms of insecurity and often more so on the youth, right? And then our consumer culture, right? You, If you don't have the right clothes, you're just not cool, you know? Like you're just not good enough. And so many other things, right? And the scholar just talks about how it's important for us to work together, right? We are insecure, we need each other. An ethic of caring of helping one another. And she said, too, that, you know, the interesting thing is when you help others, it benefits you, too, because they tend to help you a little bit more. But this ethic of we are insecure, we are vulnerable, we need each other. You know, somebody said to me not too long ago, you know, we, it used to be 80% of us were on farms, eh, about 150 years ago. And um, we didn't have running water, we didn't have electricity. I'm saying we, our forefathers and mothers, of course. And, but today, and they were quite independent, but today we're tied in, you know, our cell phones, our, we're tied in with the internet, we're tied into the water, we're, we're tied into so many things. But yet, we're in this culture that feels, I can do it on my own. But yet, we are very vulnerable when the lights go out, are we? (laughs) We know that, right? So, it's important that we guard against those manufactured forms of insecurity as well that come through social media, consumer culture, and, and so all those other things. 
And our scholar went on to say that we need to hope. And I w pricked my ears up a little bit as I was, I was reading. I, does that make sense, that metaphor? Pricked my ears up or paid attention maybe is a better way to put it. That, um, what's she going to say about hope? And she said, hope is a discipline, right? And I thought, wow, it's, it's more than op optimism where, you know, you look at the sunnier side of life, but hope is more of an action, right? A discipline, something you have to culture, cultivate, right? Because we can leave here after singing hallelujah, and we can go back to our world, and the hope that we have in Christ can be just taken over by all the other things that are screaming at us and all the terrible things that are happening in the world. It's a spiritual practice. It's important to practice it. We can practice it in community and experience in community that we are not alone, right? We are to help each other. What is the meaning of the phrase, no man is an island? Written by John Donne, a Christian who lived in the 16th and into the 17th century. He expressed the idea that human beings do badly when isolated from others and need to be part of a community to thrive. There was an emerging thought that was coming in with the Industrial Revolution that I can do it on my own. I don't need anyone. But human beings are insecure. They're vulnerable and flawed and will let us down. They will. From a Harvard study, we read that among teens, hope is linked with health, quality of life, self-esteem, and a sense of purpose. It's an essential factor for developing both maturity and resilience. Fortunately, such benefits also extend into later, later life as the opportunities for calamity start to increase. But human beings are flawed. This is so important that we hope. They will let us down. But the good news of Easter today right, is that Christ will never let us down. His love endures forever, right? Never let us down. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So we, we have hope, like right, in Christ. And the hope is that the resurrection gives us new beginnings because we know the Holy Spirit is alive because Christ rose from the dead. And our promise of eternal life, right, comes into our lives right now, right? So we cultivate that hope. We come to worship. We read scriptures. We challenge each other with theology. But we remember that we're not alone, right? And that's one of the big issues today, especially it's been brought to a bigger height through COVID, is loneliness, right? We need each other, right? We're together, the church, we're community members. We do fail, but we strengthen one another, but we know that our God's love endures forever and never fails and has won the victory over sin and death and everything that leads to death. So we have joy. The fruit of hope is joy. Okay? Because even things are really bad now, that promise through Christ, we can experience it today. And that will change your narrative. That will motivate you to allow Christ 
to become more and more in your life each day. We have our ups and downs. But we know that Christ will never, ever let us go. It's important. We've got 8 billion plus people in the world, right? How does God know me? But we know through the cross that Christ took all the hurt and all the injustice, all the conflict, the illness, put it on his back. The powers that be didn't like him because he was challenging the ways they were taking advantage of others. And they thought, we're going to kill him. We'll do away with him. He'll be gone and we can just continue on with injustice. And then what did he do? On the third day, he rose from the dead. People don't rise from the dead. The disciples were changed because of it. You see, my narrative is not merely random one of eight million plus narratives out there. My story matters. It's connected to the big story. A story of Jesus, a story of love and forgiveness, a story that we are known by God and nothing in this world can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. I love the story of the 99 who are left behind and Jesus searches for the one, eh? And just shows that even though how insignificant we may think we are or how nameless people are in this world, God knows them. And he searches for us. He died for you and rose from the dead. We matter to God, and your story, your narrative, is connected to Christ's story of suffering and death, but also connected to Christ's story of resurrection and joy. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We stand together, we're going to sing this Living Waters.
to the city of our God. There our hope is secure, do not fear anymore. Praise the Lord of living waters. There our hope is secure, do not fear anymore. It's now time for our prayers of the people, and I have a prayer request. We want to continue to pray for the Weeb family as uh, they mourn the loss of Meredith. And uh, just to let you know, again, uh, just to repeat the announcement that next week Sunday, April the 7th at 2.30 at the East Ridge Auditorium, there will be a memorial service for Meredith, and um, Reverend Ted and I will be leading at that service, and um, just to make you aware of that, and uh, just to continue to hold the family, Arlen and Heather, the parents especially, and the extended family in your prayers. Let's come to our God in prayer. God of resurrection, God of new beginnings, Renew our trust in your faithfulness and our hope that remembers the empty tomb that you rose from the dead. Resurrect, renew, and revive your people, O God. God of new possibilities, breaking into our relationships with resurrecting power. Where they are vibrant and life-giving, Lord, nurture and sustain them. Where there are memories of hurt or current misunderstanding, Refresh them with forgiveness and reconciliation. Where they are neglected or taken for granted, open our eyes to the great gift we offer each other. Resurrect, renew, and revive your people, O God. God of new opportunity, break into the governance of your world with resurrecting power. Stir the minds and hearts of leaders to work for justice and the equitable sharing of resources where violence and conflict threaten the innocent and the earth itself. Raise up advocates for peace and negotiators to call combatants to account. Lord, bring wisdom, compassion, and cooperation to all in authority. Resurrect, renew, and revive your people, O God. God of new life, break into situations of illness, pain, grief, and loss with your resurrecting power. We lift up to you, Lord, the Weeb family. Be with Arlen and Heather as they prepare for the service in memory of Meredith. Lord, let your resurrecting power, good news of the resurrection, live in their hearts, Lord. Be with them, be with their family. And Lord, be with all those who are going to the service. Let them feel your presence there and your hope for the future and new life that you give all of us. We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. God, where there is sickness of body, mind, and spirit, bring healing and hope. Lord, be with those who are ill at home, in worship here, Lord, or in the hospital, wherever they are. We lift them up to you. We lift them up knowing that your healing power through your Holy Spirit is there for them. We pray for healing and for hope. Where people mourn the loss of someone, dear Lord, or their dream of a better tomorrow, bring comfort and courage to them to go on. Resurrect, renew, and revive your people, O God. God of new creation, break into the circumstances, places, and lives that we name in the silence of our hearts. And let's pray silently as we bring those requests to God.
resurrect, Lord, renew and revive your people. God of Easter Day, break into our moments of celebration and joy. Give us gratitude, the impulse to share in the spirit of grace and understanding. Resurrect, renew, and revive our spirits, God. Now we pray all these things in one voice, in the words of the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, I, I have quite a few announcements, and then somebody gave me even more. So um, I have the, new, the youth group meets April 10th and April 24th. They're doing it twice a month now uh, from 3.30 until 5.30. And there's going to be a little gathering of the youth groups from various churches called Up Left, and it's from grade 9 and up, and young adults and young adult leaders um, meet in St. Catharines from July third to seventh and we have enough money to send some of our youth to that so that's exciting for them yes awesome um following the next service is pancakes you know the the scouts are serving pancakes after this service so um if you smell something wonderful going on you might want to stay for the service or go have a Timmy's and come back. But anyway, they're doing that. Um, so it's $10 for adults and $5 for youth. And this coming Saturday, uh, before or after you shop at the farmer's market, there will be an event in remembrance of those who've been lost to the overdose. Um, people are invited to walk the bridges and leave a flower in the river. Uh, Safe and Sound, of course, is um, participating, and so we're hoping that St. Andrew's people can show their support for those who have lost loved ones to opioid crisis. So also, we are having that legacy giving workshop, and just a reminder, April 12th from 3 to 5, and they will have um, a couple of experts that will advise you on charitable donations in your legacy. Rummage sale, approaching faster than you think, because we are having that, and so you've got to get your rummages together, uh, clean out the closets and everything, but don't bring them in just yet. So just put it on your calendar. It's, it's, um, it's coming on April 27th. So, okay, now, session. So there's that nomination for elders. So they, need, they have five openings. So if you have someone of good character and a member of the church, you would like to nominate, or you can nominate yourself. There's uh, forms uh, at the desk, and uh, give it either to Lori James or Reverend Ed. The WMS meeting is this Tuesday, and the Bible passage word is peace. Uh, peace as in Pieces of eight, not, not peace. Right. Okay. Um, oh, the Wednesday morning work crew. I was here on Wednesday morning, and they were virtually invisible. <laughs> I, really. Until it was Lenten lunch. They all showed up for soup. Yes, they did. Anyway. Um, after, uh, that's all I have, but there is a short video going to be shown as part of the announcements. God bless.
hillbillies are <laughs> well thank you to Ruth and to Doug for putting that together that was a lot of fun all right and that box Ruth it's up here so put your ideas in it there's a little piece of paper a little pencil if you what if you what would you do with a million dollars right so start to start to put your ideas in the box all right, let's stand together. It's the last Sunday of the month, and as is our tradition in this service, we sing the benediction song to send us out. Go now in peace, never be afraid. Lift up your hearts to God on this Easter Sunday, day of resurrection. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship, the communion, the guidance, the presence of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you always this day, tomorrow, the day after that, and forevermore. Amen. Let's sing it to each other. Go now in love and show you believe. Reach out to others so all the world can see. God will be there watching from above. Easter. See you next week.